Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video will be part 2 of Naruto Tamer of the X Antibody. All credit goes to the author, Kitsune Dragon, for their amazing story. Make sure to read the whole story by clicking the link tree link in the description, then clicking on the name of this story. This part will be chapter 2 to 3 of the story. Also don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now let's get into this amazing story. Naruto was walking in an area completely shrouded in darkness. In fact it was so dark he couldn't see his own hand in front of his face. As he continued walking he realized he had no idea where he was going. I have no idea where I'm going the blonde Digimon tamer said to himself. As he walked, he saw ones and zeros that glowed in emerald green color before fading out of existence. Then he saw a small orb of light. What the hell? Naruto thought as he walked closer to the light. The light began to take shape, but as he got closer the light got brighter, and he was forced to stop and shield his eyes else risk losing his eyesight from the intensity of the white light that shone in the darkness. That was when Naruto heard it. A voice from the orb of light. Help me, the voice said. Naruto's eyes widened as he recognized the voice. No way. You're, you're that voice, the voice from the blue card, Naruto said. Who are you, and why do you need help? He asked. However, the voice paid no heed to Naruto's words and continued speaking. Please help me. It's so dark in here. So cold, please help me. You insolent fool. The voice suddenly changed from innocent and pure to one that sounded evil and demonic. Like Kyuubi's voice, only much, much darker. A large claw of shadow raced its way towards Naruto and Naruto screamed as the claw was about to grab him. Naruto shot awake screaming like there was no tomorrow and panted. He grasped his entire body to make sure he was still in one piece. He was drenched in a cold sweat and looked at the clock and it read 6.30 in the morning. He then heard a cough and looked a bit more to his left and saw Doraemon standing there with worried look on his dragon-like face. Naruto, are you okay? You were screaming really loudly and you were tossing and turning in your bed the ex buddy holder said. Naruto shook his head. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a nightmare is all it was, Naruto said. Then why did it feel so real? And what was that voice? It was just like the blue cards, only it changed to a much darker one, Naruto thought before opening his nightstand drawer and took out his Digivis slash D-Arc, Digimon card holder with the blue card next to it, and the five modification cards he was given to buy the Digimon sovereigns. He stared at the blue card before Doraemon snapped him out of his thoughts. Hey, Naruto. You awake there? Dormon asked. Naruto shook his head and nodded. Yeah, I'm going to have a shower now. Maybe it'll help calm my nerves, Naruto said. Dormon nodded and then waited, sitting on Naruto's bed as he waited on Naruto to finish showering. The purple dragon like Digimon looked at the D-Arc and observed its reddish-purple coloring before staring at the blue card. What is it about this card that put Naruto into such a trance? Dormon thought. He tried to see if there was sumething on the card, but other than the D and the picture of the blue pixel-looking Digimon coming out of said D, it was pretty much a normal card. The door to the bathroom opened and Naruto stepped out wearing the clothes that he wore yesterday. The black t-shirt with orange flames and an orange scale dragon on the front. The pair of blue cargo pants with mini pockets and finally the pair of blue ninja sandals and the necklace that he won from Tsunade. Hey Naruto, where did you get that pretty necklace? Dormon asked. Naruto smiled softly as he looked at Doraemon before looking at the aquamarine colored crystal on the necklace. I got this from a person I once called a sister, Naruto said. Doraemon seemed to notice that Naruto was rather emotional during his response and did not press the matter any further. Oh right, Naruto. Remember you have to go to school today, Doraemon reminded his tamer. The blonde Digimon tamer nodded before reaching into his backpack and pulled out two cups of instant ramen. He walked into the kitchen, with Doraemon trailing behind him. He opened the cups by tearing off the paper ceiling before adding the water, and then putting the seasoning packets in the cups before popping the both into the microwave. Doraemon watched as Naruto made the ramen. So what are we having to eat? Doraemon asked staring at the ramen cups rotating in the microwave. This my young DG buddy is called ramen. Ramen is the most delectable food that will ever meet your taste buds and is the food that only gods have made. Yes it's that good Naruto said. Doraemon still looked perplexed as he stared at the ramen cups, and then the timer went off. Naruto squealed with joy, his trademark fox grin on his face before reaching out and grabbed the cups, already cooling the ramen down with a low-level wind jutsu. He then handed one to Doraemon and went into his room before grabbing some chopsticks and heading back into the kitchen. Doraemon watched as Naruto greedily ate the noodles of the ramen. Seems pretty good Doraemon thought before taking a sniff, smells good too. Oh what the hell Doraemon, just eat it. The purple dragon Digimon tilted the cup to his lips and drank the broth, 
while also eating some of the noodles that entered his maw. Doraemon's eyes widened as he stared into space. Naruto stopped eating and looked at his partner and noticed the look on Doraemon's face. Doraemon, you okay? Naruto asked. Doraemon looked at his tamer and smiled showing his sharp teeth. This is the best food ever. Doraemon yelled before continuing to eat the ramen. Naruto smiled before continuing with his ramen and in a matter of seconds, the ramen was gone. I knew you'd like it, Naruto said. Doraemon nodded and then followed Naruto to the door. Okay, I'm going to go to the school now. There's extra ramen in my backpack so in case you get hungry, also if you get bored watch the television over there in the living room. I'll be back by 3.30 okay? Naruto said. Doraemon nodded and gave Naruto a mock salute. Naruto saluted back with a chuckle before leaving and closing the door. Doraemon looked around the apartment and then walked over to the television and sat on the couch. The fur-covered dragon looked around and stared at the television's black screen and then tilted his head in confusion. Sue, how do I work this thing? It was going to be a long day for this Digimon. Shinjuku High School Naruto had already arrived at the school in a matter of minutes since his apartment building was only 10 minutes from the place. He stepped through the large gates to the school and looked around and saw many students entering the place so as to reach to their classes early. So where's the principal's office? Naruto thought as he looked around the school complex. He then spied the entrance to a large building and guessed it was in there. Naruto walked towards the building and entered through the doors to see an entire corridor filled with doors. Naruto sweat dropped. Now this could be a problem, Naruto said. His ears then picked up the sound of someone entering the building too. As he turned around he saw a young boy around the age of 11 and was a bit shorter than Naruto, with bluish black hair and brown eyes. The boy looked like a mix between Chinese and Japanese heritage and wore a black t-shirt underneath an orange vest with a pair of blue pants and gray and yellow colored sneakers. Hey, who are you? The boy asked. Naruto looked at the boy before answering. It's common courtesy to give your own name first, Naruto said. The boy chuckled. That it is. I'm Henry Henry Wong and you are? Henry asked, extending his hand for Naruto to shake. Naruto extended his own and shook Henry's hand. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I just moved to Shinjuku. Any chance you know where the principal's office is? Naruto asked. Henry chuckled and pointed to the door at the end of the corridor that was made entirely of glass. That glass door right there. We'll see you around Naruto, Henry said and turned to leave. However, as Naruto turned to leave, also his nose picked up a peculiar scent on Henry. Naruto looked as Henry walked away and smirked. That scent. Seems I've met the first tamer. Naruto said before going into the office. Naruto looked at the office and looked pretty much like the Hokage's office except without a large window to look out of. Naruto knocked on the door as he looked at the ma at the desk. The man was short with graying hair, showing that his original hair color was either a dark brown or black. He had squinty eyes so you couldn't really see his irises, and he wore a gray business suit with black dress shoes and a red tie. Oh, Konnichiwa, young man, and you are? The man asked. Konnichiwa. I would like to apply to this school, sir, Naruto said. The principal looked at Naruto once over and nodded before reaching into some drawers and took out a few sheets of paper. Well, as you want to join this school, just sign these papers, and then after that I will give you an evaluation test before putting you in a class, the principal said. Naruto nodded and took the papers before signing his name and signature on them before handing them back to the principal. Good. Now here is the evaluation test. You can use that spare desk over there the principal told Naruto as he pointed to a wooden desk in the corner of a room. Naruto nodded and then walked over to the desk and took a seat in the green-colored chair behind the desk. Naruto looked over the test and smirked. These questions were quite easy, other than history and geography of course and a few of the math problems. After about an hour and a half, Naruto finished the test paper and handed it to the principal. Arigato, now if you would please wait outside while I mark this, the principal said. Naruto nodded and left the room and watched the principal mark his test paper. After about five minutes, the principal waved Naruto back in, who saw it through the glass door. Naruto walked back in and stood at the principal's desk. Well, sir, how did I do? Naruto asked. The principal looked over the test paper and smirked. You did quite well, an 85 out of 100. Welcome to Shinjuku High. Mr. Namikaze, you will be in classroom 5B. Come back next week Monday morning seeing as how it's Friday and you'll be fully instated as a student, the principal said. Naruto bowed. Arigato, sir, Naruto said, and then turned and left for home. Naruto walked along the street to his apartment, but then his stomach growled. Naruto thought for a while. Maybe I should go to the grocery and buy some food. Also, I need some clothes and judging from what Fanglomen said to be back in the digital world, 
I should probably find a shop that sells modification cards so I can use them when Doramon and I fight other Digimon, Naruto suggested. Naruto nodded to himself and went to the Shinjuku grocery store to buy some food. Meanwhile with Doramon, Doramon was still sitting down watching the blank television screen with a cup of freshly made ramen in his claws. Hmm, now do I work this television thing? Doramon wondered as he sipped some more of his ramen. Then the Digimon spied a small rectangular shaped device on top the TV. Doramon reached for it and looked at it. It was a remote, but of course Doramon had no idea what that was, and he saw many buttons on the remote and stared at the big red one. Hmm, what's this red button do? Doramon said, sounding much like a blonde, blue-eyed girl from Dexter's laboratory. Doramon pressed it, and the television screen glowed white before changing to show colorful images. Doramon stared in awe as he looked between the remote and the TV before smiling and pressed the red button again, turning it off. Then he pressed the red button to turn the television on. Doramon continued doing this for a while until he accidentally hit the channel changing button on the remote and he saw he picture on the television change. Oh, oh, Doramon said in awe before continuing to press buttons on the remote. Back with Naruto. Naruto was walking along the road to the grocery store when he smelt something really delicious. He turned his head and saw a bakery shop. The sign above it said, Makoto's Bakery. Hmm, Doramon might like some of those, Naruto said to himself before entering the bakery. Naruto took a deep breath as he inhaled the scent of bread, cake, and other goodies. Hi there. Welcome to Makoto's Bakery, a brown-haired woman said. Naruto looked at the woman and saw a black-haired man standing next to her. They were both wearing baking aprons and hats. Must be her husband, Naruto thought. Hi, I'm Naruto. I was wondering if I could buy some bread, donuts, and some cupcakes, please. Naruto asked. Sure thing, Naruto, the woman said in a friendly tone. So are you the owners of this bakery? Naruto asked as he watched the man and woman get his order. Yes, I'm Mr. Takahiro Matsuki and this here is Mrs. Mie Matsuki. My wife and our son Takato is at school right now, so you won't see him until 3.30, Mr. Matsuki said. Naruto nodded. Maybe I'll stop by when he comes home, Naruto said. Well, here you are, Naruto, Mrs. Makoto said, handing him the bag. Naruto bowed and thanked her. Arigato, Mrs. Matsuki, Naruto said, and then walked out the door. What a nice boy, Mrs. Matsuki thought. Naruto walked along the road and saw a clothing store and then decided to use his cage bunchins to do the clothes shopping for him because right now he felt like going to the shop and buying the modification cards, so he looked around and saw many people walking on the streets. Kyuso, I gotta find somewhere. Oh, that alley looks okay, Naruto thought and then sneaked into the alley. Naruto looked around the alley because he knew from experience that there were sometimes gangs living in alleys, and as a child he had to avoid them or else risk getting stabbed or mugged. So when Naruto found there were no gangs living in the alley, he rested his bag from the bakery on the ground and quickly formed his hands into a cross. Keijbunshin no jutsu, he whispered, and then three clones formed in individual puffs of smoke. Naruto gave the bakery bag to one of his clones, and then gave some money to his other two clones. Okay, you guys use the hinge no jutsu slash transformation jutsu and go back to the apartment, but first you two who I gave money to, go and buy me some clothes and make sure they are really cool okay, and as for you, you go to the grocery and get some more food. Understood? Naruto commanded his clones. Hi, Naruto-sama, his clone said, and then used the hinge and transformed. The first clone changed into a brown-haired boy with dark green eyes. The second had black hair with a single blue highlight with reddish-brown eyes, and the final clone had fiery-colored hair and hazel-colored eyes. The clones then left the alley and the one with red hair, taking the bakery bag of goods before leaving. Naruto then stepped out of the alley and made sure no one really noticed his act, and then casually made his way to find a store with Digimon cards. As Naruto was walking he saw a little boy standing by a shop window. Hey mom, look they have new Digimon cards on sale, can I have some please? The little boy begged. His mother chuckled, but then gave a harsh glare. No, not until you finally clean that pig sty you call a room, the boy's mother said. But M.O.M., the boy whined. Naruto chuckled as he saw the boy being dragged away by his mother before he got a sad look on his face. He should be happy he has his parents to look after him, Naruto thought with a sad smile before entering the store. He looked around the store and saw many things based on the Digimon franchise. Hmm, Fanglomon was right. They really believe Digimon is just a franchise in this earth, Naruto mumbled to himself. He walked over to the counter and held out some money to the cashier who was a young woman probably around 20 with brown hair and brown eyes, and wore a Digimon t-shirt with a picture of a large orange dinosaur-like creature with a brown helmet with two long horns and had sharp teeth and blew out a large fireball from its mouth, a Greymon, on it with ripped blue jeans. 
Hello, young man. How may I help you? The cashier asked with a friendly smile. Hello. Naruto looked at the woman's name tag. Mira, I was wondering if you tell me how much Digimon modification cards I can get for this amount of money Naruto said, putting up his money at the desk. The woman counted the money and her eyes widened at the amount. Wow, you have enough money here to buy at least four complete decks, the clerk said with slight shock. Naruto smirked. Well, I'll take all the packs you can give me for that amount of money, Naruto said with his trademark foxy grin. The cashier nodded and then put all the money in the cash register before reaching to the Digimon card packs behind and gave Naruto at least 30 packs of cards, each pack holding around 12 cards. Naruto smiled and took the cards before asking the woman if he could get a bag for them. The female cashier nodded and handed Naruto a Digimon labeled bag in which she put all the cards in. Arigato Mirachan, Naruto said waving goodbye. No problem, the woman said waving goodbye. That boy will get me a raise for sure, she thought, and went to tell her boss who was in the back room. Naruto smirked as held the bag of Digimon cards and walked back to his apartment. He looked at the sky and stared a bit at the sun, and judging from its position he could tell it was around noon. Naruto then decided to break into a run, so he could go back to his apartment and show Doramon the cards he got. Naruto ran along the sidewalk and avoided the many people who were walking past him with the reflexive action only a shinobi could have before finally reaching his apartment in under 15 minutes. Naruto walked up the stairs and saw his clones, still under their transformations with the bags of food and clothes. Right, now then we open the door. Naruto took the key for the apartment out of his pocket and put it in the keyhole, turned the key and opened the door and was greeted with a big surprise. There stood Doramon who was clicking away at the remote and there was a wild look in the Digimon's eyes. Doramon? Naruto asked. However, Doramon seemed glued to the television screen and didn't hear Naruto call him. Naruto walked in front of Doramon and waved his hand in front of his face before lightly slapping Doramon in his face. Naruto frowned and then looked at his clones who had rested the bags of things on the kitchen counter. The clones dispelled themselves and Naruto felt his chakra return from his clones. Naruto sighed before forming hand signs. Futon. Kamikaze no Jutsu slash wind style. Holy wind Jutsu, Naruto said, and then a powerful wind blew from Naruto's mouth and struck Dormon, knocking the remote out of the Digimon's hand, and sent him into the far wall, and thus knocking him out of his television trance. Whoa, what happened? I remember turning on the TV and then, it's all a blur, Dormon said shaking his head from side to side. You were caught in a major case of television hypnotism, Naruto said with a chuckle. You didn't even remember me just hitting you with a wind jutsu? Wind jutsu? Doramon said, tilting his head to the side. Naruto nodded and formed a cage bunshin. Jutsu are the techniques I use using an energy in my body called chakra. All living things have it although since you're made of data I'm not sure if you could do it, Naruto said. Doramon nodded and then walked up to his tamer. So did you get any modification cards that we can use? Doramon asked. Naruto nodded and held up the large bag of Digimon cards. Oh yeah, now let's open them so we can put them in my card holder, Naruto said. For the entire time, Naruto and Dormon spent the time opening the packs of cards and looking through them before putting them in the card holder which was on Naruto's waist along with his D-Arc slash Digivis. After that, the young rookie level Digimon spoke to his tamer. So why are you home so early? You said you wouldn't be home until 3.30 and right now it's... Dormon turned to look at the clock, 12.45, the purple fur dragon finished. Yeah well... Apparently the principal has to fully instate me into the school, so he said that I'll have to go back on Monday since it's the weekend now, and it makes no sense going during the middle of the school day, Naruto explained. Weekend? Dormon asked. Naruto sighed and throughout the next hour, Naruto explained the human lifestyle, which was similar to the ones that Digimon have, except without the weekends and no dangerous Digimon trying to download your data to get stronger to Digivolve. Okay. Okay, I think I get it now, Dormon said with a nod. Good. Now then I need to tell about this guy I met at the school, apparently. But the blonde tamer didn't get to finish as Doramon interrupted him. Whoa there, Naruto. I know you're a human, but when a guy like another guy, that's just not right, Doramon said. Naruto glared at his Digimon partner. I'm not gay. You Digibaka, you didn't let me finish, Naruto yelled. Doramon immediately shut up at seeing his tamer so angry. Now then as I was saying, the guy I met at school... His name is Henry Wong and he's a tamer just like me, Naruto informed the digital monster. Dormon's eyes widened. Really, are you sure? Dormon asked. Naruto nodded. I smelled the scent of a Digimon on him when he was walking past me. Awesome. So when do you think we can meet him? Dormon asked. Later, but right now. I have someone I want you to meet, 
Naruto said with his trademark foxy grin. Who? Doraemon asked with a perplexed tone, tilting his head to the side. Naruto channeled his chakra and flashed through hand signs. Ninpu. Omoi Hairu no Jutsu slash Ninja Art. Mind entrance Jutsu, Naruto exclaimed. The world around both Digimon and Tamer began to swirl into a world of darkness before the two found themselves in a sewer complex with blue and red pipes running along the ceiling of the sewer. There were some purple-colored pipes too. Naruto and Doramon looked at each other before the dragon Digimon spoke. Where are we? He asked, flapping his tiny black wings in a nervous manner. This Doramon is my mind. Now follow me. The person I want you to meet is down this hallway, Naruto said, and turned to the left before walking. Doramon looked around a while before running to catch up with Naruto, splashing water with every step. Your mind's a dump dude, Doramon said. Naruto sweat dropped. Shut up. The two continued walking until Naruto stopped and turned to the left again, and then the two found themselves in a large empty space of Naruto's mind, and all that was visible were the bars of an extremely large cage which had a small piece of paper where a lock should be that was marked with the kanji for seal. Doramon stared in awe at the size of the cage, before walking up to it. He peered through the bars, seeing nothing but darkness until a large bright crimson eyeball with a slitted vertical pupil opened up. Doramon screamed in surprise and tumbled backwards falling on his ass. Naruto chuckled along with a dark voice from inside the cage. Doramon, meet Kyuubi, Kyuubi. This is Doramon my Digimon partner. Naruto introduced the demon to Digimon and vice versa. Doramon could only stare in awe as he saw the eyeball rise in height and that he heard the sound of paws on ground and looked to see a giant red furred fox with long nine tails and black rings around the eyes and mouth. Sharp white teeth and claws that could rip flesh from bone was also shown as QB stepped out into the dim light. Well hello there young Digimon, QB said with a vulpine grin. Doramon shook his and after getting over the initial shock looked from Naruto to QB and back again. This thing has been living inside your head? Doramon asked in surprise while pointing at QB. I resent that comment of being referred to as a thing, Doramon. I am merely a giant nine-tailed kitsune with an incredible healing factor and powers that could crush any mortal. That's all QB said as if it were an everyday thing, which it was. Doramon's mouth gaped before he shut it close. Well, nice to meet you, QB, Doramon said uneasily. Oh, don't worry. I don't bite. Much, the giant kitsune said with a chuckle and snapped his jaws in a menacing manner. QB then stopped laughing and looked at Naruto. So, kit. Any reason why you have decided to come back into this place you call a mind? QB asked his Jinchuriki. Hi, Doramon and I need some training and I know that time passes faster in my mind than in the outside world. Naruto paused before continuing. QB, what would be the current time exchange between one hour in the outside world to here? Naruto asked. The nine-tailed kitsune tapped its claw on the tiled sewer floor as it thought. Hmm, I would say one hour in the real world would be equivalent to at least a year in here, give or take a few months. Of course, when you're bored out of your mind in a place where time seems to stand still, it's hard to keep track, but I would still say my calculation is correct also since this is your mind and not your physical body, you will not age in here, but your mental self will, QB replied. Naruto nodded before turning to Doramon. Okay Doramon, this is the the plan. We train for an equivalent of three hours in the real world which would be approximately three years of training in here, Naruto said. Wait, this is also confusing, but let me get this straight. First of all, you have a giant nine-tailed kitsune living in your mind for? My entire 13-year-old life, Naruto answered. Right, and now you've brought me into your mind because since time passes faster in here at a rate of one hour outside in the real world is equal to one year in here, you want us to do some training as Tamer and Digimon, correct? The purple fur dragon asked. Naruto nodded. Precisely, Naruto said, confirming his Digimon's analysis. Doramon smirked and rubbed his claws together. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get to training, Doramon exclaimed with an excited tone. Naruto smirked and then with a snap of his fingers, his sewer-like mindscape changed into a desolate wasteland like back in the digital world. Only there was a giant QB there watching them as it was tied down by a large metal chain in which it was attached to a collar around the fox's neck with the kanji for seal on a dog tag. Okay, let's do this, Naruto thought. Then for that entire time inside the mindscape, Naruto and Doramon trained practicing collaboration moves between Doramon's abilities with the Digimon modification cards and Naruto's Jutsus. They also practiced with Doramon's original fighting abilities having Naruto spar with the Digimon and having Naruto and QB teach him how to fight without the use of modification cards in case the situation revealed itself. 
Finally, they did mental simulations made by Naruto in which they battle varying types of Digimon from in training level to champion. Dormon provided explanations of the Digimon he wanted to fight with so Naruto could think them up. Finally, their training had ended, with Dormon improving by leap and bounds. Of course, he still couldn't Digivolve since this was only done by the young rookie's mental self. However, his skills and experience from the training would be passed back to his physical body. Naruto had been taught more Jutsus by QB, and he had his Taijutsu style fixed up so he could fight better in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In the end of the training, three years had passed, but in reality it had only been three hours. Well, Kit, this is all I can teach you. The elemental Jutsus that you were able to use at this age are at your disposal, just don't overdo it. Same goes for you, Doramon, QB said. Naruto and Doramon nodded. Arigato, QB sensei they said with a bow. QB chuckled, and then a flash of light appeared in Naruto's and Doramon's field of vision, and then they left Naruto's mindscape. Naruto and Doramon woke up from returning to the real world and looked at the clock which read, 3.50. All right, Doramon, let's go meet the other tamers, Naruto said. However, as they were about to leave, their stomachs growled. What can I say? Like, tamer like Digimon. But we should eat first, Doramon suggested. Naruto then took out the goodies he got from the Makoto's bakery shop and ate them. Naruto then went into his room and walked over to his backpack and took out two scrolls. What are those, Naruto? The Digimon asked. The blonde shinobi tamer, smile at his partner. These are letter from my deceased parents, Naruto said. Doramon nodded and then left the room to wait on the couch. Naruto saw that the scrolls required blood to open, so he opened his father's first. Dear Naruto, if you are reading this then you are probably old enough to know that I am your father, Minato Namike's Yandame Hokage of Kanoha. Naruto, I am very sorry for placing this burden, the QB into you, but I cannot use another family's child to hold the beast knowing that that child will be shunned. I know you might hate me for it, but it's the only way and I know in one can do a better job of being a Jinchuriki than my very own son. Remember Naruto, I love you and don't forget that. Love, your father. Naruto noticed the dark spots on certain parts of the scroll and realized his father must have been crying writing the letter. I don't hate you Otisan slash father. I understand your decision, Naruto thought with a smile before opening his mother's letter. Hello there my little Naruto-kun. First of all, I am so sorry that I cannot watch you grow up to see you become a strong shinobi like your father and I. Let me first explain the QB attack. You see, I was the Jinchuriki of the QB no Kitsune, after my predecessor who was also an Uzumaki. However, a female Jinchuriki seal is weakest during childbirth. When I gave birth to you, Naruto-kun, I was attacked by a man named Madara Uchiha who ripped the QB from my body, but due to my being an Uzumaki and our longevity of life and resilience was what kept me alive. Your father and I loved you very much and that is why we will sacrifice everything, even our lives to make sure you survive this crisis Naruto Kuen. I love you and don't forget that. Get a pretty girlfriend and have lots of grandchildren for me so that I can look over them from above. Ha ha ha. Naruto chuckled as he wiped away the tears from his face. That sounds like my Okachan. To tell me about grandchildren already, Naruto thought. Naruto then cried a bit more before wrapping up the scrolls. I'll learn the jutsus later. Anyways, time to go and see the other tamers. Naruto walked out of his room and then attached his digivis and card holder to his waist by a belt he had bought at the clothes shop, which was black with a buckle in the shape of an X in crimson to represent the X antibody. At least that's what Naruto felt it represented, a symbol of his Digimon's unique data code. Naruto then decided that in order to blend in more, he would change his sandals for the sneakers his clone had bought. Naruto slipped on some socks and a pair of orange and blue sneakers. All right, Doramon, let's go. Roger that. Oh, buddy, oh, tamer of mine. Streets of Shinjuku. Naruto and Doramon walked along the streets, with many of the children from schools looking at Doramon as he passed, still thinking he was a child in a costume, and many people wanted to touch him. But Naruto drove them away. So where's this bakery that you got all that yummy food, Naruto? Doramon asked. The Makoto's bakery shop, why you want to go see them? Or just the food? Naruto asked with a smirk at his Digimon. Doramon blushed and mumbled, the food? Naruto chuckled and rubbed the head of his partner. Don't worry, we can go see them, but first let's take a stroll through the park first. Okay, I want to get some fresh air, Naruto suggested. The purple dragon Digimon nodded. Yeah, sure thing, Doramon said. The two then headed for Shinjuku Park. As the partners entered the park, they noticed nobody was there other than a few couples, but they were now leaving the park, and it was upon their arrival they saw a large white light appear from the middle of the park. The light shot up like a pillar from the ground, and then a field of digital pixels formed. Naruto and Doramon hid behind a tree as they sensed a presence coming from the digital field. 
What's happening? The two said to each other. Hypnos headquarters. Sire, Mr. Yamaki, there's another bioemergence. A young brown-haired woman said to a blonde man in a business suit and dark shades, while typing away at a keyboard. Okay then Riley, send a tracer and track it, the blonde man, identified as Mr. Yamaki, ordered to the woman identified as Riley. It's not you, sir, the wild one was too fast, and the tracer couldn't make it in time, Riley reported. Yamaki played with the cigarette lighter he always kept on his person. Eh, this is getting out of hand, Yamaki mumbled to himself. Back with Naruto and Doramon. Naruto and Doramon watched through the fog of the digital field as a small green Digimon with a red mohawk, wearing a brown vest and pants, and sporting a large wooden club in its hands, stepped out of the field. Naruto's D-Arc then went off and Naruto took off his waist belt, and then looked as a holographic image of the Digimon before him showed up, along with a description and list of the Digimon's attacks. Naruto read it over. Okay, this has never happened to my D-Arc before, but apparently it says that the Digimon is Gobloman, rookie level, he cheats a lot apparently, and has a sly and hard personality, along with having great pride in its mohawk. It knows attacks called Gobbly Bomb and Gobbly Strike, Naruto read. Doramon looked at the Digimon and then at Naruto. So should we fight? Doramon asked. Naruto smirked. However, his nose caught wind of another scent, a female as well as a Digimon. Naruto and Doramon watched as another person walked through the digital field. It was a girl, around 11 with fiery colored hair, purple-gray colored eyes and wore a white t-shirt with light blue sleeves and the image of a purple broken heart on the front a pair of blue jeans which ended just below her knees and then had a red belt wrapped around her waist. The girl completed her outfit by wearing a pair of red, steel-tipped shoes and had two wristbands on its wrists. Next to the girl was a fox-like Digimon about as tall as a 17-year-old person, with icy blue eyes and with blonde fur. But the tip of the Digimon's ears, her paws, stomach area and neck which was like collar of fur along with the tip of the Digimon's tail were white. Purple armbands that were stretched from the wrists to the elbows and were patterned with the Inyang symbol on each one. Also, two purple scar like markings appeared underneath the fox Digimon's eyes, along with two Tomo shaped markings on its both of its legs completed the look. Hmm. Apparently, this Digimon is called Rinamon, which is a Digimon who is fearfully loyal to her tamer. They are storing and fast. Sounds like a shinobi. Her attacks are Power Paw, Diamond Storm, and Kohenkyo. Naruto read from his Digivis. Well, Naruto, it seems we're not going to be fighting today. So why don't we just watch the rookie take a shot at this guy, Dormon suggested. Naruto took out a small scroll and unsealed it before revealing a bag of popcorn. This could be good, Naruto said as he took a few popcorn kernels and popped them into his mouth. The girl looked at her Digimon before turning to her Digimon. Rinamon? You ready, Rinamon? The girl asked. Rinamon nodded. Always, Rika, Rinamon said. Naruto looked at the girl, now known as Rika. Hmm, Rika. Nice name. She's kinda cute too, Naruto thought taking some more popcorn. Goblinman turned to face Rinamon and issued a battle cry before running and tried to swing its club and hit Rinamon. Rinamon dodged the attack and then kicked the little green Digimon away into a tree causing it to yelp in pain. Oh, did that hurt? Rinamon asked in mock caring. Goblinman growled before holding out its hand and a small ball of fire formed. Gobbly bomb! The goblin Digimon yelled and threw the orange ball of flame. The attack was avoided by Rinamon, but nearly struck Naruto and Doramon who were still hiding in the bushes. Damn, that thing nearly hit us, Naruto said. Forget that, he burnt my popcorn, Doramon said with anime tears coming down his face. Naruto sweat dropped. We nearly get burnt, and he thinks about popcorn? Naruto thought. Rinamon, after avoiding another gobbly bomb attack, tripped out Goblinman's feet from under him before kicking the Digimon upwards and then jumped to meet it in the air. Power paw. Rinamon yelled before her paw was shrouded in a ghostly blue-like flame and struck Goblinman in the face. Finish it, Rinamon, Rika said. Rinamon nodded and while still in the air, the fox Digimon crossed her arms in front of herself. A bright white circle of energy formed before taking on the shape of diamond-like shards. Diamond storm! The blonde furred fox yelled before sending out the sharp diamond attack and struck the goblinman causing it to yell out in pain. However, somewhere in a nearby tree, a small little Digimon with white fur and large white ears trimmed with purple and then had big green eyes with the digital symbol for the zero unit on its forehead stood and watched the fight. Ah, is the game over? The young Digimon asked. Then the red triangle in the middle of the zero unit symbol began to glow and the downed goblinman was enveloped in white light before changing. Goblinman Digivolve to Fugaman. 
a red oni-looking creature with a tiger-striped loincloth to cover itself from the waist to just above its knees. The demon-looking champion-level Digimon stood with a silver-studded wristband that was worn on the entire forearm of the and a large bone club was held at the Digimon's hands. Yay! The game's back, Calumon is happy now ha ha ha! The little white Digimon, identified itself as Calumon, yelled in excitement. Whom seems he's digivolved into his champion form? Fugaman with the attack's evil hurricane and heavy stick, he's gonna be as tough as he is ugly Naruto said reading about the digivolved form of Goblinman. Well Doramon, it seems we should step in now, Naruto said. Doramon smirked and the crimson triangle on Doramon's head seemed to glow as he prepared to fight. Bring it on, Doramon said. The two stepped out of the bushes and then heard the sounds of running footsteps. The five, consisting of two tamers and three Digimon turned to see a boy with a brown hair and reddish brown eyes wearing a blue t-shirt and gray-colored pants that were a bit past the knee and had green sneaker with yellow wristbands on his wrists and a pair of goggles on his forehead. Naruto noticed the physical characteristics of the boy and put two and two together and realized this was the Matsuki's son, Takato. Next to the 11-year-old newcomer was a red dragon-like reptile Digimon with yellow eyes, wing-like ears, a long and strong tail, and carries the black digital hazard symbol on his chest. The Digimon seemed to be muscular yet a little slender with big legs, perfect for fast running. On each of his strangely large hands, the Dino Digimon had paws, something you wouldn't normally see on a dinosaur or reptile Digimon, and three fingers with long claws. And on each foot, he has two clawed toes and a claw coming out from the heel. One very indistinct feature of the Digimon Naruto was looking at where the stripes and triangle patterns on certain parts of his body. On its snout is a black, inverted version of the Zero Unit. Never seen a Digimon like that before, Dormon voiced Naruto thoughts as his D-Arc picked up no information on the dinosaur-looking Digimon. Then Naruto saw Henry Wong, and on his shoulder was what looked like a mixed breed between a terrier dog and a rabbit. It had long ears and in short limbs with many green markings on its body. No time to daydream, Naruto. Rinamon needs help, Dormon said pointing to Rinamon. Rinamon tried a diamond storm attack. But Fugamo spun his club like a windmill and blocked them all jumping up and bringing the club down on Rinamon. Heavy swing! The Oni-looking Digimon yelled. Rinamon jumped out of the way, but Fugaman followed up really quickly and punched Rinamon in the snout before grabbing her and slamming her into the ground. However, as the three 11-year-olds watched as Fugaman was about to hit Rinamon again, they turned at the sound of a cry of metal dash. Doramon rocketed off at a very fast speed and Fugaman felt as if he had been hit with metal as he flew away from Rinamon. Rika, Takato and Henry looked to see a 13-year-old boy with spiky blonde hair wearing a black t-shirt which had the picture of an orange scale dragon on the front with orange flames along the bottom of the shirt, a pair of black cargo pants, blue and orange sneakers, and a black belt with a crimson X as the buckle. The boy was holding a bag of popcorn and munching happily. All right, let's finish this guy and go home, Doramon, Naruto yelled. Naruto? Henry asked. Henry, you know this guy? Takato asked. Yeah, he was applying to go to out school today, Henry said. Okay, my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and I'm a Digimon tamer, just like you guys. Now then, Rika, I believe your name was? Naruto said to the redhead. Naruto smirked. Watch and learn. You too, Henry and Takato, Naruto said. Doramon watched as Fugaman rose up off the ground. The champion-level Digimon raced towards Doramon and swung its club down. Heavy swing! But Doramon smirked with confidence before twisting on his heel and avoided the attack. Hyper Dash Metal! Doramon yelled before racing up along the, the length of the bone club and then slamming his head against Fugaman's face. Dino Tooth! Doramon then bit down on Fugaman's flesh, but Doramon let go rather quickly and began to spit. Man, dude you reek, do you ever bathe? Doramon asked. Fugaman growled before spinning rapidly and then throwing his club. A black and red-colored tornado formed around the club. Evil Hurricane! The red-colored version of an ogreman yelled. Doramon looked at Naruto, who nodded to his Digmon. Naruto rested his popcorn bag on the ground and opened his card case. The whiskered blonde drew a card before holding his D-Arc and swiped the card. Digimodify, speed activate! Naruto yelled. Doramon then took off at a goddamn fast speed and avoided the attack before the club flew back into Fugaman's hands. Come on, Naruto. Stop showing off to the kitties and let's finish this, Doramon said with a smirk. Naruto chuckled and nodded, before drawing another card. Digimodify, power activate. Naruto yelled as he swiped the card through the slit on his D. Arkansas Doramon then felt a rush of power before running towards Fugaman. Hyper Dash Metal. 
The purple dragon like Digimon yelled before running up to Fugaman and knocking the champion up into the air. Doramon the opened his mouth and yelled his final attack. Metal Cannon. Doramon yelled, and then multiple spheres of metal were launched from the rookie Digimon's mouth and slammed against the body of the champion level, and destroyed the Digimon and reduced to it to data. The digital field left, and the three eleven-year-olds looked at Naruto and Doramon in amazement. What the? was all Takato could say. Naruto turned and smiled to the others, and saw Rinamon stand to her feet as she was on the ground watching the fight. Hey guys, Takato your parents told me that you were going to Shinjuku High, but never mentioned you were a tamer. So what's your Digimon's name? Naruto said. His name is Gilman, I made him myself, and he came to life when I swiped his picture through my Digivis, Takato said. Gilman looked at Takato, and then at Naruto and Doramon who greeted then with a wave and a grin. Hello Narutamon Doramon, Gilman said with a smile. He's young so he doesn't know the difference between Digimon and humans yet, Takato explained. Rika just glared at the blonde tamer. Henry, who's yours? Hold on. Naruto check his D-Arc and checked the Digimon that Henry had and found out it was Terriermon. Naruto then turned to Rika, but he was stopped before he could say even one word. Listen here blondie, I didn't need your help. Rinamon could have handled herself, Rika said in a cold tone that reminded Naruto a bit of his former best friend, Sasuke. Well, I don't care what you think. I saw a Digimon in trouble, and I wanted to help the Digimon, not you, Naruto said. Couldn't you at least thank us for saving your partner? Dormon asked. What? Rinamon's just a Digimon meaning that she is just data nothing more, Rika said. Naruto glared at Rika with an icy cold stare. You really think that? Well, I think that Digimon are living creatures and deserve our respect and shouldn't be treated as just data. My friendship with Doramon is what makes him strong. Isn't that right, Doramon? Of course, Naruto, Doramon said folding his arms over his chest. Well then, why don't you back up your words and fight me now, Rika said. Naruto smirked and gave a come motion with his hand as he picked up his popcorn bag from the ground. Rinamon got up, and then Rika and Naruto began to face off. Go, Rinamon! Rika yelled. The fox-like rookie Digimon raced towards the dragon-like rookie and attacked with a power paw, but Doramon just swiftly dodged all of them before firing a sphere of metal, signifying his use of metal shoot. Rinamon was thrown back, but skidded along the ground as she righted herself. Come on, Rinamon, you have to better than that. You have to be the best, Rika ordered. Hi, Rika, Rinamon said and glared at Doramon before jumping into the air. Rinamon crossed her arms in front of her face before a bright glow formed and light particles took on the shape of diamonds. Diamond Storm, the yellow-furred fox yelled. However, Terriermon decided to jump in and stop the fight, and the attack hit him. No, Terriermon, you said you wouldn't do it, Terriermon, Henry yelled. Then a light appeared from Henry's green D-Arc. Digivolution. Terriermon digivolved to Gargamon. Terriermon was now much taller, his face and ears were entirely green. The edge of the ears and he body and muzzle of Gargamon being a tan color, a red diamond lay in the center of the champion level's forehead. Two red slash-like marking were on Gargamon's cheeks, his hands were replaced with Gatling guns. A string of ammunition was strapped across the trigger Happy Bunny's chest, and he wore a pair of navy blue jeans. Mmm, that's Gargamon, Terrierman's champion form. He's skilled in the art of hunting, and its attacks Gargo Laser and Bunny Pummel sound like they hurt. Naruto, said as he read from his D. Arkansas Naruto, was about to have Doramon fight the bunny with guns for hands when Gargamon started firing his Gargo laser attack in a random out-of-control manner. Hmm, it seems that maybe we won't have to. Naruto was interrupted a bullet flew and scattered Naruto's popcorn everywhere. Doramon and Naruto looked on his horror as they saw the popcorn fly from Naruto's hands. Naruto glared at the bunny and unleashed killer intent. No one and I mean no one touches my popcorn and lives. Naruto roared, and then charged the trigger happy bunny. Naruto, are you crazy? You can't fight a Digimon, Takato warned the blonde. Gargamon started firing at Naruto, but Naruto took out a kanai with an exploding note from the weapons hook he had behind his back and threw it. The kanai blew up in the large rabbit's face before Naruto jumped and punched Gargamon in his face. Naruto then channeled Chakra into his arms and threw Gargamon into a tree before jumping and kicking Gargamon in the face. Naruto then repeatedly punched Gargamon in his face. Wow, was all the other tamers and their Digimon could say. I guess I was wrong. You can fight a Digimon, Takato said before turning to Naruto's partner. So Doramon, does he always do this for popcorn? Takato asked. Doramon's sweat dropped. Actually this is the first time. I've seen him act like this, Doramon said. When Naruto stopped, 
The energy from the Digivolution had worn out and Gargamon turned back into Terriermon. Momentai Naruto, Momentai! Terriermon yelled. Naruto stopped punching and looked to see Terriermon and chuckled slightly before helping wipe away the blood from Terriermon's burst lips. Gomen Nasai, Terriermon, Naruto said, but you hit my popcorn. Momentai, Naruto, Terriermon said before walking like a drunken sailor to Henry and fell to the ground. You should take anger management classes, Naruto, Henry said. Henry and Takato left to go and hide Gilman in the shed they had found earlier in the park since Takato couldn't keep Gilman at his home in the bakery and thus left only Rika. Rinamon, Naruto, and Dormon were left staring at each other. You seem strong. Can your partner digivolve yet? Rika asked. Naruto looked down at his partner and smirked. Nope. What? So much power and he still can't digivolve into a champion level, pathetic, Rika said. Yeah well, says the one who didn't beat Fugaman, Naruto said. We could have handled it if you didn't butt in, you baka, Rika yelled. Naruto looked at Rika with a calculative gaze. Rika, about what you said, do you really believe that Digimon are just data? The blonde asked. The fiery-haired tomboy nodded. Yeah. Rinamon is here to help me be the best, and I expect nothing but the best from her. If she fails, she's weak, and the only way to make her stronger is to absorb the data of Strom Digimon and have her digivolve, Rika explained. Naruto nodded. I see. But think about this, Rika. If Digimon are just data, then why do they have feelings? Why does Rinamon having the feeling to always care for you and protect you? Naruto asked. Rika's eyes widened at that question, but remained impassive. This is worthless psychobabble. I'm going home. Now go away, Whiskers, Rika said. Let's go, Rinamon. Rinamon nodded and walked away with Rika. Naruto and Doramon smiled and waved to the two females. I love you too, Rika-chan, Naruto joked. But since Rika's back was turned to him, he didn't see the blush on her face. The two partners then stared at each other with a serious look on their faces before nodding. If Terriermon and Goblinman digivolved, the question is where is he? Naruto said. Doramon nodded. The light of digivolution, taking on a physical form, Calumon was nearby, Doramon said. Unbeknown to the two partners, the white rabbit-looking Digimon, Calumon was hiding underneath a bush, staring at Naruto and Doramon with his big green eyes. I wonder why these weird Digimon are trying to find me. I've never seen Digimon like them before. Maybe they want to play a game? Calumon guessed, and then crawled out from under the bush. Naruto and Doramon turned, and saw the white Digimon who bore the digital symbol for the zero unit on his head. Hi there, little guy. What's your name? Naruto asked Calumon. I'm Calumon. I heard that you guys want to play a game, Calumon said. No, Calumon listen you're in dang. But Doramon was interrupted as Calumon began laughing. Ha ha ha, let's play tag, Calumon said, and then tagged Doramon before his ears expanded and Calumon flew away. Naruto channeled Chakra into his legs and grabbed Doramon. Come on, we gotta catch that Digimon, Naruto yelled. Naruto, stop running so fast. Doramon yelled. Naruto ignored his partner's cries and leapt upwards before throwing Doramon. The purple dragon grabbed Calumon and the two Digimon fell to the ground. Gotcha, tag you're it. Game over, Doramon said. Calumon frowned. Aw, the game's over already? Calumon asked. Yes, but listen, Calumon. I'm Doramon and this is Naruto. Calumon, you're in danger and Naruto and I are here to protect you, Doramon explained. Calumon listened intently to Doramon. Am I in trouble then, Doramon? Calumon asked. Oh no, not at all it's the bad Digimon that want to eat you. So we need you to stay with us for the time being okay? Naruto answered. Calumon nodded and then Doramon and Naruto rested Calumon on the ground, biggest mistake in the world, and told Calumon to follow them. Okay, follow us Calumon. But as Calumon was following them, Calumon saw a pretty monarch butterfly fluttering by and Calumon giggled and gave chase and disappeared into the brush. Don't worry if you get bored Calumon, there's a lot of games we can play back at home. Doramon turned when he heard none of Calumon's giggling and gasped as he saw no Calumon. Naruto Calumon's gone. Nanny, you lost him already, but he was right behind you s. Naruto yelled at his partner. My fault. Why is this suddenly my fault? Because you were holding him, and then you let him go. The tamer and his Digimon sighed. The bondwoman wasn't kidding. Ten seconds, and that Digimon disappears from you, Naruto thought. I'm starting to hate Calumon right now, Doramon thought. Naruto and Doramon were walking down the road to the Matsuki's bakery where Takato lived as Naruto wanted to get to know his fellow tamers better. Naruto walked through the door and smiled at the Matsuki parents. Oh heyo, Mr. and Mrs. Matsuki, 
Is Takato in? Naruto asked. Oh, well if it isn't that nice boy from yesterday, Mrs. Matsuki said. Of course she didn't question Doraemon since she thought he was still just a kid in a Digimon costume, just like every other citizen of Shinjuku thought. My name is Naruto, Mrs. Matsuki, and yeah nice to you both again, Naruto informed her. Mrs. Matsuki smiled. Of course, well then Naruto, Takato's in the park. He said he needed to take his box which he had a stray dog in, for a walk, Mrs. Matsuki said, which Naruto interpreted as, he's getting rid of the dog. Mr. Matsuki frowned. Yeah. Well he wouldn't be getting rid of it if you had let him keep the dog, Mr. Matsuki mumbled. The female baker glared at her husband. Are we going to have this conversation again? She asked. I told you Takato's not old enough to have a pet, Naruto and Dormon sweat dropped. So this is what Takato has to deal with. I wonder what they would think if they knew that Gilman wasn't a dog? Naruto thought. Humans are crazy, Dormon thought. Well I'll go see him, Jai Naruto said with a wave. Shinjuku Park. Naruto and Doraemon entered the park and looked around the main area, but saw no sign of Takato and Gilman. Where do you think they are? Naruto asked his Digimon partner. The purple dragon-like Digimon sniffed the air and pointed to a secluded area of the park. He's over there. I also smell bread, Doraemon said with drool falling out of his mouth. Naruto sweat dropped. I knew he would like the bread, but not this much Naruto thought. The two then walked along the path and found a small abandoned safe house of some kind. It was old and broken, but the gate to it seemed to be in good condition. There Naruto spotted the goggle-wearing tamer. Also he saw Henry standing with Takato. Oi, Takato Henry. Naruto called out. Takato turned around and saw the blonde from yesterday. Hey, look Gilman it's that kid from yesterday, Narufo, Nokuto? Takato told his Digimon. It's Naruto, Takato, Henry said with a chuckle. Gilman and Terriermon looked at Naruto and Doramon and grins broke out on their faces. Narutamon, Doramon you are here, the virus type Digimon said. Hooray now we can play, Gilman added with excitement. Then the dinosaur-like Digimon pulled out the bag of break Takato gave him. Anyone want some bread? Gilman asked. I do, Doramon said accepting the offer before he and Gilman began chowing down. Oh good, you're both here, Naruto said with a smile. Takato and Henry looked at each other before going back to Naruto. You were looking for us? They asked the older tamer. Naruto nodded. Yeah, you see, I want to get to know you guys since I'm not familiar with any of you, Naruto said, then a thought crossed his mind, come to think of it I'm not even familiar with this world either. Nanny, what do you mean by that? Henry asked. Naruto's eyes widened. Maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud, Naruto thought. Naruto knew he was going to have to explain to them that he was a shinobi, so why not now? Naruto opened his mouth to explain when his enhanced hearing picked up on some sounds in the trees. Doraemon stopped eating and immediately ran to Naruto's side, his normally round pupil changing into a vertical slit meaning he was ready to fight. Power paw! A voice yelled from the trees. The yellow fox-like Digimon, Rinamon jumped out of hiding and aimed to hit Doraemon in the face, but Doraemon having trained his reflexes with Naruto in his tamer's mind, he easily sidestepped the attack and Rinamon ended up forming a small indentation in the ground from her miss. Rinamon then unexpectedly twisted her body while she was on her knees, and then lashed out with a kick and struck Doramon in the snout, sending the purple dragon into the trunk of a tree. I knew it. Your victory yesterday was just a fluke, a female voice said. Oh, hey Rika-chan, Naruto said with a smile. Rika slightly blushed, but changed that as she forced it down and glared at Naruto. Don't call me that. So are we gonna fight or not whiskers, Rika said. Aw, oh, that was mean Rika-chan, Naruto said with a playful pout. Rika didn't respond and remained impassive as always. Rinamon, finish that sorry excuse for a Digimon off, Rika ordered. Of course Rika, the fox Digimon said with a nod. Doramon groaned and rubbed his head in pain. Kuso, girl you hit really hard, Doramon said. Oh, poor baby Rinamon said in a mock sad tone. Doramon glared at the fighting Digimon and looked to his tamer. Naruto, can I hit her, just once please? Doramon asked. No, Doramon we came here to talk not fight, Naruto said. Doramon glared at his tamer, but nodded and stayed put. Oh come on Whiskers, your Digimon was made to fight, Rika said. Not everything has to be about fighting Rika, Digimon were made to fight yes, but they have more capable uses than just fighting Naruto said. Oh really such as? Rika asked. Let's not get into that, but it's nice to see you all here because I need to talk to you all, Naruto said. Rika glared at Naruto before turning to leave. Rinamon phasing next to her tamer, and the two were about to walk away when they saw Naruto standing in front of them. 
Now, now, can't have you two leaving now, can I? Naruto said with his trademark foxy grin. How did you move so fast? The redhead asked. Yeah, dude, that was really fast. I haven't even seen a Digimon move that fast without the use of the speed card, Henry said. Takato, Gilman, Terriermon and Rinamon remained silent, but stared in shock. That's what I want to talk to you guys about. You see, as tamers, we should get to know each other better, and I want to know you guys better, Naruto answered. The three 11-slash-12-year-olds looked at the 13 year old blonde and sat on the ground waiting to hear his story. Rinamon leaned against a tree with Doramon and Gilman, and Terriermon laid on the ground with the tamers. Okay. You guys ready for this because my story is not going to be pretty, Naruto said. The tamers nodded. Naruto smirked before starting. Okay, well as you all know my name is Naruto Uzumaki Namkes and I am not of this universe. I was born in a world where shinobi or ninja as you guys call them, thrived using the energy we call chakra to perform feats only people like you could only dream about, Naruto said. I've heard about chakra, they say it's the mixture of the body's spiritual and physical energies, but I thought it wasn't real. Henry said. Naruto smirked and made a cage bunshin, and then performed the Rasengan before the clone disappeared. Everyone stared in awe at the swiling orb of chakra in Naruto's hands. Well, I can assure you, Henry, chakra is very real, Naruto said. Sugoi, all the tamers said. Naruto then continued his tale. I lived on a single continent called the Elemental Nations, which was comprised of five mainlands Hai no Kuni with the village of Kanahagakur, Mizu no Kuni with Mizugakure, Kaze no Kuni with Sunagakure. Tuchi no Kuni with Tsushigakure, and the final one being Rai no Kuni with Kimogakure. These lands were the most powerful lands in the entire continent with me, hailing from Kanoha. Thirteen years before my birth, a giant demon fox called the Kyubi no Kitsune attacked Kanoha, and my father, the leader of the village, sealed the beast inside me. Since then, I joined the Shinobi Academy and I became a Jinin level Shinobi and joined a team with my teammates, Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. We became good friends with each other after going on many missions together. However, during the exams that we had to take to become Chunin level, our team was attacked by an evil man by the name of Orochimaru, who I might add is a pedophile. Naruto said. Rika, Takato and Henry, along with Thier Digimon, shuddered at the thought of such a man. He planted something called the Curse Seal on my teammate, and he began to become consumed by darkness. Finally, he reached the point where he betrayed my village, and I was sent on a rescue team with a couple of my friends to go and bring him back. We fought hard and I had finally caught up to Sasuke at a place called the Valley of the End. We fought hard and we fought to the best of our abilities. In fact, I was forced to use the Kyubi's chakra and I defeated him by hitting with my Rasengan, which is the ball of chakra I showed you all earlier. I brought him back, but Sakura hated me for bringing him back because I hurt him so badly, Naruto said dropping his head. Whoa, Naruto were you okay after that? Henry asked. Yeah, whiskers I mean that had to have been traumatic, Rika said, actually saying something. My pain must be like a prick on the finger compared to his, she thought. Naruto looked up with a sad smile. It was, and because I hurt Sasuke to such a degree, they saw me as a threat, especially since they knew of my use of the Kyubi's chakra. They hated the demon inside me and wanted to kill me, get me out of the village, or make me into a weapon. However, I was banished and I left the village. Luckily, I told them all to burn in hell, Naruto said in a joking tone with a chuckle, causing the others to chuckle a bit too. Anyways, after that I wandered the forests wondering what I should do now, and then I found this. Naruto pulled the blue card out of his pocket. You have one too? Takato asked, his eyes widening. Well I am a tamer, all tamers are given this blue card. It was this card that allowed me to be transported to the digital world where I met Doramon. I became his partner, and here we are, Naruto finished and took a bow. Takato, Henry, Rika, Rinamon, Gilman, and Terriermon looked in shock at the life Naruto had lived. Dude, your life, that sounds so sad, but cool at the same time since you were a ninja, Takato said. Don't worry about it guys, besides, this is my future now, to be a Digimon tamer, Naruto said with a foxy grin. Pfft. Whiskers you may be a ninja, but your Digimon is weak so let's fight, Rika said pointing at Naruto. Naruto frowned. Rika, why do you fight so much? Naruto asked. Rika looked at Naruto with a confused look. Why? because I want Rinamon to become stronger and Digivolve, and the only way to do that is to defeat any and all strong Digimon and make her fight ABD absorb their data, Rika said. Naruto looked at Rinamon. Do you feel this way too? Naruto asked the fox Digimon. Rinamon's blue eyes looked at Naruto's own as she thought. Hi, Rika is my partner, and she is strong, and she will help me achieve my goal to Digivolve, Rinamon said. 
Naruto nodded, and then looked as Doraemon walked up next to him. Rika once, you had asked me why Doraemon hasn't digivolved, Naruto said. The reason is that although Doraemon is strong, very strong actually, is just that we haven't been in a situation where the bond between Digimon and Tamer are used to amplify the energy that will make Doraemon digivolve, Naruto said. What are you saying, Whiskers? Please don't say this is another one of your psychobabble stuff, Rika said with an annoyed tone. Naruto and Doraemon looked at each other before smiling at each other. Naruto was about to answer when he noticed the large flash of blue light on his left. Well, that's all the time I have, Naruto said as he looked to his left and saw a digital field form. Rika, you might want to get that, Rika looked to see the digital field form. The three tamers then ran off with their Digimon in the direction of the field while Naruto and Doraemon watched them run. However, Doraemon noticed Naruto's gaze seemed to focus mostly on the fiery-headed tomboy. So then Whiskers is it now? Doraemon asked with a sly smirk. Naruto blushed lightly. It's nothing like that. We're not even friends yet. So far, she seems to see me as Oni annoying, and she acts like Sasuke, Naruto said. Suri, it's not, and if she's anything like Sasuke, you'll break through her steely exterior and befriend her, Doraemon said, and then walked off with his hands behind his head. It's not like that. Aha, Doraemon said. IT is not. Why won't you believe me? Naruto yelled, and the two walked off in the direction of the digital field. Digital field. Rinamon and Rika had arrived at the digital field first since Rinamon had picked up Rika and using her speed to arrive there first. Rinamon rested Rika down on the ground, and the two looked in front of them to see the, the blue and black portal before a large Digimon appeared. The Digimon looked a lot like an Allosaurus that was blue with red stripes and a feather hat like what the leader of Indian tribes would wear and had yellow fur like rings around his wrists. Rika took out her D-Arc and looked at the Digimon. Okay, let's see what we got. Alamin. Champion level awesome. He is Tyrannomon's rival and runs really fast with his powerful leg muscles. His attacks are Dino Burst, Dino Flash, and Dynamite Head, Rika Red. Well, well if it isn't a little Renamon and her tamer. I'll destroy you both, Alamon said. Let's go big boy, Renamon said before jumping upwards. Alamon ran and met her in the air and charged forward with his head. Dynamite Head. Alamon roared and rushed Renamon who was still in the air. Rinamon smirked and then flipped to land on Alamon's back before the dinosaur Digimon landed on the ground. Rinamon then ran along Alamon's back before dropping in front of his face. Diamond Storm! The fox Digimon yelled as she crossed her arms in front of her chest. Light particles in the shape of diamond shards and just as hard, rocketed from a ring of light and struck Alamon. But they seemed to have no effect due to Alamon just standing there and taking the attack like it was nothing. Hee hee, that tickled. Weakling, Alamon said as Renamon landed on the ground. Alamon then raised his head, and a ball of red flame formed. Dino burst! The Dino Digimon yelled. However, as he was about to fire the attack, there were three yells. Pyrosphere. Terrier tornado. Metal shoot. A red sphere of flame. A green tornado and multiple balls of metal flew at Alamon and struck the champion Digimon in his jaw hurting him as well as knocking his head to the side and his Dino Burst was redirected and blasted the ground forming a crater in the ground. Rika looked to the side to see. Naruto, Takato and Henry running through the field with their Digimon. Stay out of this Rinamon can handle this. Rika yelled and then took out a card from her card case. Digimodify. Snowagumen's freezing wind. Rika yelled as she swiped the card. Rinamon jumped in the air and a swirl of blue mist formed around her paw. You need to cool down Dino Breath, freezing wind. Renamon yelled and a large burst of ice and wind flew from the mist around Renamon's hand. Alamon turned and opened his mouth and fired another Dino Burst. Flame and ice met into the air and the elements struggled for dominance. However, the flame began to overpower Renamon's ice and then struck the fox Digimon. Renamon screamed in pain as the Dino Burst attack burnt her and sent her to the ground. Naruto whipped out a card as Alamon was about to stomp on Rinamon. Digimodify, speed activate. Naruto yelled and then swiped the card through his D. Arkansas Doramon ran forward at a goddamn fast speed and grabbed Rinamon and brought her out of the way as Alamon's foot crashed down onto where her body once was. Rinamon glared at Doramon as he rested her down. What no thank you for saving your life, ungrateful rookie, Doramon mumbled. Rinamon ignored the dragon Digimon and went back to fight. Stop interfering. Rika yelled as she whipped out another card. Digimodify, data chip activate. Rinamon then triggered her freezing wind attack again, and the data chip modification caused it to power up and the attack struck Alamon head on. New. 
I've always hated the Ice Age, Alamon roared before becoming completely frozen in ice. Rinamon then coated her hand with blue flame. Power paw, she yelled, and then fist crashed down on Alamon and destroyed him as he became data. Rinamon quickly absorbed the data and floated in the air as she did so before floating to the ground. Rinamon and Rika then walked out of the digital field and left to go home. However, before she left, she turned back to face the trio of males and their Digimon. Listen here, you guys, if you dare try to help again. I'll make sure you won't be able to tame your Digimon ever again, Rika said with a tone as cold as the Arctic. Takato and Henry looked scared, but Naruto glared back at her. Blue eyes met purple. Now I definitely know why Rinamon won't Digivolve, Naruto said. It's because you are too cold and you push everyone away. You need to let Rinamon in and show the caring that you Digimon shows towards you. Rika narrowed her eyes at Naruto before leaving with Rinamon. Rika! Naruto yelled at her in anger since she didn't listen to him. Naruto and Doramon looked at each other before looking back at Rika as she walked away. Damn, she needs a chill pill, Takato said. Any colder, and she'll be a popsicle, Henry said. I think that classifies as rude, Terriermon said. I want bread. Gilman yelled. Everyone turned to Gilman who just gave a toothy grin. Oh Gilman, you clueless fool Doramon thought as he face-palmed. Takato and Gilman went back to the park so as to put the dinosaur virus type back in his new hiding place while Henry and Terriermon went back home. Naruto and Doramon watched as the other left. So, you gonna go after her, lover boy? Doramon asked. Shut up please, Naruto said, and the two walked back to the apartment complex where they lived. Ah, come on Naruto, it was just a joke. You prince charming you, he added for kicks. A vein in Naruto's head bulged and Naruto looked at his Digimon partner. The purple furred dragon sweat dropped and backed away from his tamer in a nervous manner. Now, now lover boy no need to get on like this, Doramon said. Doramon, I will kill you, Naruto growled, his eyes now a crimson color due to his anger. Momentai, Doramon uttered, trying out Terriermon's excuse, but Naruto's expression did not change. Doramon chuckled nervously before breaking into a run as Naruto chased the dragon all the way back to the apartment. Get back here so I can kick your digital ass. Naruto roared. I'd rather not. Doramon replied with a hint of panic in his voice. Come on, stop running and take it like a mon. Never. The two had made back to the apartment and Doramon stood there at the door and began trying to turn the knob, but that was when he remembered something. He heard the jingling of a key chain and gulped as he saw Naruto standing there with the key to the apartment. Oh, Doramon, I have the key, Naruto said before chuckling evilly. Naruto then grabbed his Digimon and slapped the X and a body holder silly. Finally, when Naruto stopped Doramon's cheeks were glowing red from pain. Itai, 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 Doramon grumbled before Naruto opened the door. The two partners stepped inside and Naruto took off his shoes and rested them near the door before walking around the room. Naruto decided to look inside the bag of clothes his clone had gotten him. Naruto looked in it and sweat dropped before pulling out the same set of clothes he was wearing now. Six of them plus the one he owned now would make him be wearing the same outfit for the week. Naruto shrugged. Hey, I would have done it too, since I like this outfit, Naruto said to himself. Doramon went into the bedroom and laid down on the bed to sleep on his top bunk. Naruto changed into his pajamas and went to bed also. Naruto was about to close his eyes when, Okay, Naruto remember. You have school tomorrow, Doramon said. Naruto's eyes shot wide open as he remembered this piece of information. Shit. Naruto yelled. The next day. It was Monday in Naruto's first day of school at Shinjuku Junior High. A slash in. I meant to say this, but I didn't want to change anything cause I was lazy. This way people can stop telling me how that since Takato, Henry and Naruto are young and have to be in middle school. Naruto had his backpack on his back and walked through the gates before making his way to classroom 5S just as the bell rung. He climbed up two floors and stood outside the door to wait. Okay class, we have a new student joining us today. Naruto heard the teacher say. The teacher walked towards the door and opened it and smiled as she saw the blonde boy. Ah, there you are. You can come in now, the teacher said. Naruto's teacher was male, with brown hair that was reddish brown in color and had brown eyes that were shown through squared lens glasses. The man wore a brown suit with a gray tie and brown shoes. On his shirt was a name tag that said, Mr. Kazuma? Arigato. Mr. Kazuma, Naruto said as he walked into the classroom. The class looked at the Digimon tamer and observed him. Before Naruto spoke, he noticed the class whispering in on themselves and used his advanced hearing to listen to them. Hey he looks weird, one kid said. How does his hair do that? It is defying gravity. 
He looks cute. Are those whisker marks on his cheeks real? Naruto chuckled inwardly. So, QB, what should I do? Naruto asked his tenant. Well, Kit, we could try and take the normal approach since these are normal people. Unlike you, hey, I am normal, in a non-ninja sort of way, Naruto shot back. Excuse me, Namike-san? Mr. Kazuma said. Naruto shook his head as he had spaced out when talking to QB. Hi, Mr. Garuma. Would you mind introducing yourself to the class? Oh right, Naruto said with a chuckle, earning a bit of laughs from the rest of the classroom. Oh hey Ominasan, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I am 13 years old and I like ramen, Digimon, and my friends. I dislike people who try to hurt or disrespect my friends, as well as the three minutes it takes for ramen to cook. I know some martial arts and I can use weapons pretty well too, like Kanai and Shuriken. The class immediately perked up at that part. And I hope you guys can help me feel welcome in this time here at school. Naruto finished with a bow. Mr. Kazuma nodded before having Naruto sit in a seat by the window. Naruto took out his books as his teacher began teaching mathematics. Naruto looked out the window as he was learning about the use of integration and finding the area under a curve between two points as the curve is bound by the x-axis and y-axis. The blonde sighed before he felt a tap on his shoulder. Naruto turned to see a red-haired girl with gray-colored eyes. Rika? Naruto thought, but that thought was crushed as the girl's face looked nothing like hers. Hi, I'm Kitsumi, so is that really true? She whispered to him. Naruto looked confused as other students began talking to him during the teacher's teaching. That you can throw kanai and shuriken. My brother can do it, but he stopped after he nearly bled to death from cutting his wrist, a black-haired boy said. By the way, I'm Kiyoshi. Well, yes it is true, Naruto said with a smirk. Plus I could kill without dropping a hat, but who cares? Naruto added in his thoughts. Well, in our original universe, everybody would care, and if people knew here, they would freak out and call you killer, murderer, or you are awesome, QB said. Yurei Sai, Baka Kitsune, Naruto thought, as he continued smiling at his newfound friends. The bell then rang and Naruto walked outside as it was break time. He quickly looked around for Henry and Takato and spotted them underneath the tree by the football field. A slash in. I'm from the Caribbean, so for the Americans out there, football is what you guys call soccer. Naruto walked over to them and waved. Oh hey Naruto, how was your first day of school? Henry asked. Other than the fact that you don't learn to kill people here, pretty good. But math is so boring, Naruto deadpanned. Takato and Henry laughed at this before the three stared at each other. Hmm, something doesn't seem right, Naruto said. What do you mean? Takato asked. Is it the smell of the cafeteria food? Takato asked. No, but thanks for telling me. I've been wondering what that smell was. Is it as bad as it smells? Naruto asked. Takato and Henry looked at each other, and then back at Naruto. Yes, they replied. Naruto sweat dropped. I'm gonna go home feeling like I'm dying. Again, considering I've nearly died on other occasions, the blonde Digimon tamer thought. So what did you think was wrong? Henry asked. Naruto blinked. Oh yeah, I smelt something, but it wasn't the cafeteria food. It smelt like a Digimon was hanging outside my classroom window. Naruto said and then he sniffed the air again and his eyes narrowed. And I know who it is, he added with a growl. Wait here, he told his two friends. As soon as the two heard that Naruto knew this Digimon, they could only think one thing. Poor Doramon. Naruto walked over to the bushes that were near the side of the building where he was looking through. He silently made his way over to the bushes and then pulled them apart. Ah! Naruto yelled pulling the bushes apart. However, the Digimon he saw wasn't the one he was hoping to find. That's not Doramon Naruto said as he looked at the light of Digivolution. Kalyaman, what are you doing here? Naruto asked the tiny rabbit-looking Digimon. Kalyaman looked at Naruto and smiled before jumping on his face. Hi there, human. You looked funny when we were playing tag. How did you jump so high? Can all humans jump that high, or are you part rabbit or something? Can your hair defy gravity? What is the meaning of life? Kalyaman asked rapidly. Naruto gasped for air as he pried the cute little Digimon off of him. What? Uh, no. No, I am not part rabbit. I don't if my hair defies gravity. Why does everyone ask that? You know, I do not know the meaning of life, Naruto said. Kalyaman giggled at Naruto when he answered. Humans are silly. You are all so silly, Kalyaman said, smiling at Naruto. The whiskered blonde looked at the tiny Digimon and smirked. Come on, Kalyaman. I'll introduce you to my friends, Naruto said as he placed Kalyaman on his head. Yay. More human friends like Naruto, Kalyaman cheered. Wow, Naruto's taking a while. He must really be scolding Doramon, Takato said. Yeah, or maybe he cut school, Henry said. 
The two shared a laugh before Naruto appeared in between them. What? How did you get here? The two boys cried out in surprise. You know it's this magical thing called walking, Naruto said in a sarcastic tone. Yeah, he walked, Kalyaman said. Humans are so weird. Henry and Takato blinked as they looked at the white, rabbit-looking Digimon on Naruto's head. Ah, uh, Naruto, who is your little friend here? Henry asked. Yeah, he's kinda cute too, Takato added. You mean cool? Oh, what the hell? Yeah, he's a cute little Digimon, isn't he? Henry said, throwing away his last sentence. Naruto and Kalyaman chuckled. Takato, Henry, this is Kalyaman. That's me, Kalyaman said, pointing his fingerless hand at himself and expanding his ears. Nice to meet you. Which one of you, Takato and Henry? Kalyaman asked. Naruto then identified Takato as the blue sweater and goggle-wearing knucklehead while Henry was the tanned Asian boy with an extreme need for mannerisms. No offense, guys, Naruto said. None taken, they said. But secretly in their minds, they hated the descriptions Naruto gave them. So who is Kalyaman's tamer? Henry asked. Naruto's eyes froze in their sockets before glancing around the football field. Kyuso, I forgot, but I shouldn't tell them about Kalyaman's true form and why he is here in the human world, Naruto thought as he tried to come up with an excuse and decided to just go with the flow. Nah, he has no tamer, Naruto said truthfully. Really? Well, maybe we could find one for him, Takato said. And I have the perfect candidate in mind. Follow me, Takato led the two humans and one Digimon to the small stegosaurus-looking hideout that was in the playground area. There stood a boy with brown spiky hair with a purple visor. He wore a black t-shirt and gray pants and was playing the Digimon card game with another boy who wore a red t-shirt under a tan colored jacket with black pants. The ones playing cards are my friends Kinta and Kazu. Kazu was the one I was talking about to be Kalyaman's partner, Takato said. Naruto looked as Kazu played the power modification card and won the game against Kinta. It was that particular move that caused Naruto's mind to not choose Kazu. I wouldn't recommend him. He constantly focuses on upgrading the power of his Digimon and thus causes them to leave themselves wide open, Naruto said. That is a fighting style I learned to discharge the hard way, Takato chuckled nervously. Yeah, I guess you're right, Takato said as he imagined Kalyaman and Gilman having a boxing match. Kazu used the power modification card and then Kalyaman jumped to hit Gilman, but Gilman got under the little white Digimon's guard and knocked out Kalyaman with a single punch. You don't guess I'm right. You know I'm right. Takato Naruto said with a smile. The bell then rang for the students to go back to class. Naruto looked at Kalyaman and Kalyaman looked down at him. Well Kalyaman, I have to go back to class now, Naruto said. Kalyaman, who was just happy and his ears expanded, became sad and his ears became small again by shrinking. Oh, does that mean you're not gonna play with me anymore, Naruto? Kalyaman asked. No, not at all. It just means we're gonna take a... And Naruto snapped his fingers as he thought up the right word. A timeout. We're taking a time out, because I'm tired and I need to go back to class so when class is over I'll come and get you. Okay. Naruto explained. Kalyaman immediately brightened up at those words. Yay, yay. More playing with Naruto, gogglehead and manners boy hooray. Kalyaman yelled. Henry and Takato sweat dropped at their nicknames before turning to Naruto and glaring at him. This is your fault, they told him. Naruto sweat dropped himself before holding up his hands in a weak defense. Gomen Nasai, Kalyaman. Listen, their names are Takato and Henry, okay? Naruto said. Kalyaman nodded. Henry and Takato, and Naruto. Kalyaman yelled, saying Naruto's name happily. Naruto chuckled and rested Kalyaman on the tree branch, after lightly jumping since the branch was actually quite low. I'll come pick you up late, so stay here, Naruto said. Kalyaman nodded, and the three tamers went back to their classrooms. Time skip, school's over. Naruto, Takato and Henry immediately ran out of their classrooms and headed for the tree and smiled when they saw Kalyaman sleeping on the tree branch. Naruto picked up the little Digimon who immediately woke up. It was then that someone else chose to come out. Neru too. The voice of a certain purple-furred dragon Digimon yelled. Everyone turned to see Doramon running towards Naruto really fast and then slammed into Naruto's body and Naruto felt as if he was hit with a solid metal bar. Oh, Kemisama that hurt. Doramon, please tell me you didn't use dash metal while running to me, Naruto said in pain. Doramon smiled as he got up. Okay, I'll tell you I used hyper dash metal instead, Doramon said with a smirk. Naruto growled before putting his partner in a headlock and giving him a noogie. Unknown to them, a golden fox Digimon was watching from a nearby tree. What is it about their relationship? Naruto and Doramon, why is it that I feel like mine and Rika's relationship should be this way? Why do I feel jealous? Rinamon thought. 
Rinamon then received a mental call from Rika. Rinamon sighed before using her speed and seemed to phase out of existence as she headed towards her tamer. Who is this Digimon? Calumon asked looking at Doramon and then looking at the red triangle on his head. Oh, shiny, Calumon said before jumping on Doramon's head and staring at his reflection in the crimson gem that was embedded in Doramon's skull. Ha ha ha, Calumon remember this is Doramon. He was the Digimon who caught you during our little game of tag yesterday, Naruto informed Calumon. Oh yeah, Doramon, Doramon why why? Calumon said and then expanded his ears to show his happiness. Terriermon then came out of Henry's backpack where he always hid. Hey who is this little guy? Terriermon asked. Terriermon, you're one to say little. Calumon's almost as tall as you, Takato said. Keyword Takato. Almost so momentai if you please, Terriermon said. Terriermon, telling people off is rude. Now Calumon, let's go to the park so you can meet my Digimon partner Gilman, Takato told the white little Digimon. Calumon giggled in excitement before the group ran off towards the park. Naruto then grabbed Calumon and put him on his head. I'll meet you guys there. Okay, Calumon, hang on tight, Naruto instructed. Calumon laughed and clutched Naruto's blonde locks as Naruto ran off full speed, using his highly trained leg muscles from his ninja training. Weehee! Calumon screamed. Shinjuku Park Gilman's place. Look how happy they look, Naruto thought with a smile, as he watched Dormon and Gilman lean against opposite walls and toss Calumon to each other using their tails. This is nice. Look how much fun they're having, Takato said. Yeah, it would really ruin the moment if a Digimon appeared now, Henry said. Hypnos HQ. Sir, there is another wild one approaching, Riley said to Yamaki. Yamaki watched the screen and the red that represented the Digimon being followed by a tracer that he had already commanded Riley and her partner in the opposite chair to send. However, the tracer was destroyed before it reached its designated target. Sir, the tracer. It has been destroyed, Riley informed him in shock. Yamaki growled as he heard Riley's next words. It's bio-emerging. Back with the gang. As they were all playing, the Digimon suddenly stopped and then Gilman's eyes dilated. Terriermon's nose started twitching and Dormon's pupils changed from rounded into vertical slits. Hey guys, what's wrong? Takato asked. Gilman didn't respond, but simply growled in response. A Digimon, Terriermon said. The Tamer's eyes widened in shock and then took off, completely forgetting about Calumet. It's coming from the baseball field near my parents' apartment, Henry said, as he observed the area of the digital field that formed. Calumon giggled and flew after the group. Yay, another game. Baseball field. Naruto and the others arrived at the digital field with their partners and walked through the digital field. Takato and Henry has put on their glasses and goggles as they walked through the fog of the digital field before taking them off. Why do you guys put on those things if you only take them off, like one second later? Dormon asked. Takato and Henry looked at each other and shrugged. Because it's cool, Takato replied. The group shrugged before turning to their front as they heard an evil laugh, and then multiple shadows floated through the mist. A sharp object flew through the air, but Naruto quickly whipped out a kanai knife and threw at the projectile and both weapons clattered to the ground. Naruto walked up to the place where his knife landed and pocketed it in his weapon's pouch. Come out, I know you're there, Naruto called out. A buzzing sound was heard as 12 bee looking Digimon appeared. They looked like a crossbreed between bees, ants and flies, with the crimson color of ants, the body structure of a fly, and the stinger of a bee. It wore a silver helmet-like armor on its head through which blue eyes looked through. The digicrest of knowledge was shown on the helmet. Henry took out his D-Arc and looked as a holographic image of the insect Digimon appeared. Flybeeman, an armor Digivolution Digimon and champion level. It tends to travel in swarms and attack with their lightning sting and poison stinger attacks, Henry read. Naruto and Doramon stepped forwards. You ready, you two? Naruto asked as he got into a fighting stance. Takato and Henry nodded. We're ready, Takato said with determination. Naruto nodded. Then let's go wild, Naruto, and the Digimon charged forwards. The fly beam and scattered, and then got into an attack formation. Lightning sting! The insect Digimon yelled, and then a dozen yellow bolts of lightning flew from the fly beam and stingers. Gilman and Terriermon were struck and sent to the ground but Doramon and Naruto jumped over the attacks. Metal shoot. Doramon roared and then three spheres of steel shot out from the X-Antibody holder's open maw and struck down three of the Digimon, but only immobilized them for a few seconds as they got back up. Naruto ran forwards and avoided the lightning sting attack from one before he grabbed the stinger and then formed a Rasengan in his hand. I thought you couldn't do that unless you used a cage bunchin, Doramon said. I lied, 
Naruto said as he slammed the Rasengan into the stomach of the fly beeman. The Digimon turned into data before Naruto spun on his heel, and then took out two kanai, and threw them at two incoming fly beeman, and impaled them in their eyes, and turned them into data as he recovered the kanai. Poison stinger! One fly beeman yelled, and then tried to impale the purple dragon Digimon. But Naruto's Digimon partner smirked before dodging the attack before grabbing it and throwing it towards Gilman. Gilman now? Doramon commanded. Gilman nodded and looked at Takato who nodded also. Digimonify, power activate! The goggle-wearing preteen yelled as he swiped the modification card through his D. Arkansas Gilman's power was then increased. Pyrosphere! Gilman yelled and then fired out multiple crimson spheres from his mouth and struck several fly beamen, as well as the one Doramon threw to him turning them into crimson data that all three Digimon absorbed. Terrier Tornado! Terriermon yelled and then spun rapidly forming a green twister. The twister then grew bigger as Terriermon spun faster and faster before stopping when all the fly beamen were gathered into the tornado. The tornado dispersed and all the fly beamen spun in the air. Dizzy. Okay, Doramon. Time to finish them, Naruto said. Doramon nodded and then Tamer and Digimon jumped into the air. Doramon opened his mouth. Metal shoot. Doramon yelled, and then at least seven spheres of metal flew towards the nauseated fly beeman. Naruto then formed hand signs and took a deep breath. Katan. Gukaku no jutsu slash fire style. Grand fireball jutsu. Naruto yelled, and then a ball of orange and red flame flew from Naruto's mouth and set the metal spheres on fire. Que la verás chen yatsu. Gokakyu daibakufu no yatsu barra diagonal que la verás chen yatsu. Fireball explosion yatsu. Naruto yelled and then the metal balls that were set on fire exploded upon contact with the fly beamen and caused a large explosion of fire and smoke. Naruto and Doramon gave each other high fives while Henry and Takato, along with their Digimon and Kalyamon who had tagged along watched in awe. Naruto blew fire from his mouth, Kalyamon said as he giggled in glee. Dude, that was so freaking awesome. Takato said. You can make a pyrosphere like me? Gilman asked. No Gilman, it's similar to pyrosphere but much bigger and powerful, Naruto said. So is my attack weak then? Gilman asked with his ears dropping in sadness at thinking his friend was calling him weak. Naruto frowned and tapped Gilman on the head. Of course not. Naruto was about to say more when another voice appeared through the fading digital field. Of course it is a female voice said. Naruto looked up from Gilman as everyone turned to see the fiery-haired tomboy. Rika! Everyone exclaimed in shock. Why are you here? Takato asked. Rika walked towards the area where the fly beamen were and saw that they were not data yet and were still phasing in and out, meaning they were almost dead. Rinamon, finish them off and upload their data, Rika said in a monotone. Naruto glared at Rika as she watched Rinamon use her diamond storm attack and absorb the down Digimon's data. That was cruel, Rika, Takato said, attacking them while they were down. Digimon have feelings too, you know. Listen and listen good gogglehead, especially you whiskers. Digimon are just physical embodiments of data and therefore have no blood or emotions, they are just data. D-A-T-A, -A, data. Rika said to the three tamers and their Digimon. Then Naruto clenched his fists in anger. He wanted nothing more than to walk over there and slap Rika in the face. Hard. But it was against his principles to attack someone unless he was attacked first, or if they were recognized as a threat and Rika was neither attacking him nor was she a threat to him or his Digimon. Rinamon, let's go, Rika said. Rinamon walked over to Rika and nodded before picking up her tamer into her arms and then using her superior speed, blurred away towards Rika's house. Takato and Henry looked between themselves and the Digimon. She is like an ice queen or something, Henry said. She would classify as rude in my book, Terriermon said. The two tamers then left for home. Of course, Takato had to go to the park first to drop off Gilman before going home. Naruto and Doramon and Kalyamon were the only ones remaining after that. You're going to go and try and talk to her, aren't you? Dormon asked. Naruto looked at his partner and then picked up Kalyamon before resting the light of Digivolution on his head. Hi, and if I can't talk sense into her head that Digimon are real and have emotions and a soul, we're going to have to get physical with them, Naruto said. Let's get physical. Let's get physical, Dormon sang the song. Physical. Naruto and Kalyamon chuckled before the three got ready to run. Digimodify, hyperspeed activate. Naruto yelled as he slashed the card along the slit in his D-arc. Okay, let's go, Naruto said. Kalyamon was giddy and laughing as Naruto and Doramon ran off at super fast speeds, causing Kalyamon to once again to have to cling to Naruto's blonde locks to remain on his head. Rika's house. Rika walked into her large, traditional Japanese-styled house. 
Rika walked through the front door and took off her shoes before walking past the living room where her grandmother, Seiko Hada, was watching the television with Rika's mother, Makino Nanako. As they saw Rika walking past the two elder females watched her. Rika Nanako, where have you been? Makino asked. Rika sighed and faced the fashion model that was her mother. I went for a walk. Okachan, that's all, Rika replied in a bored tone. A walk? Well, that was some walk. You've been gone for an hour, Makino said. Oh, don't be so hard on the girl Makino. I remember when you, yourself, went out late to do things, Rika's grandmother said. However, as the three were about to converse more, there was a knock on the door. I'll get it, Makino said as she got up from the couch and walked towards the sliding door. Makin halted as she heard whispers outside before the rustling of bushes and something that sounded like, Stay in Kami Forsaken Bush until I come back? The door opened to reveal a blonde, spiky haired boy with sapphire eyes and three whisker marks on both his cheeks. The boy wore a black t shirt with orange flames on the sleeves and bottom of the t shirt, which bore an orange scale dragon on the front of the t shirt. Black cargo pants with mini pockets, a pouch of some sort, a digital device and card holder like Rika's, except in reddish violet, and finally a pair of orange and blue sneakers completed the outfit. Oh, Kabanwa, young man, Makino said with a polite smile. Who are you now? The young woman asked. I'm a friend of Rika's, Naruto lied. More like sworn enemy, or something he thought. Makino's eyes brightened at that piece of information. Well, you're certainly a handsome young man, please come in. Okachan, please make some tea for this friend of Rika's, Makino said. Rika has friends? Seiko said in surprise. Rika looked at her grandmother. She didn't think I had friends, but who was this, at this hour too? She thought and then gasped at who she saw. Whiskers, what the hell are you doing here? She asked. Makino looked at her daughter and frowned. Now, now Rika, this boy said he was your friend. Is he? She asked. No. Then that means yes, Makino said with a smile. Naruto chuckled. May I come in, Mrs. Nanaka? He asked. Of course, um. What is your name? My name Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, Naruto replied. Oh, such a nice name. It sounds like the name of a hero or something, Makino said, and then led both children to the kitchen where they sat at the small table and drank some tea. Wonderful tea, Seiko-san, Naruto said as he sipped some more of the hot beverage. Seiko blushed lightly at the compliment. Oh please, no need to be so complimentary, Naruto, the elderly woman said. That was when Makino decided to ask the question she had been dying to ask. Are you Rika's boyfriend? Naruto's eyes widened as well as Rika's and Naruto suddenly began choking on his tea and dropped the cup on his lap singing his balls. Naruto bellowed as he began jumping around in pain while also coughing from choking. Meanwhile, Doramon, Kalyamon and Rinamon who were all sitting in a tree observing the scene were laughing. While well, Rinamon was surprisingly releasing a chuckle, but the other were laughing like no tomorrow. QB on the other hand, well, let's just say his spleen died like 10 times before he stopped laughing as he rolled about in the cage. In the end, Naruto had an ice bag on his balls and was still trying to clear the tea out of his epiglottis. Oh, Goman Nasai, I shouldn't have asked that, Makino said. Are you all right? She asked. Naruto grunted a bit in pain and readjusted the ice pack. Just? Naruto paused to adjust the ice pack, mumbling things about crazy mothers. Dandy. He finished his sentence. You're right. You should not have asked that question. Rika said, and she couldn't leave, because when she tried to her mother moved at speeds that even Rika herself didn't know she could move at, and had her sit right back down next to Naruto. Okachan, when can the whiskers kid leave? She asked. Naruto straightened his back to show that he was taller than Rika by at least two inches, and glanced downwards at her. Kid, Rika I'm 13, and you're like what 11? Naruto said. I'm 12 just so you know, Rika said with a huff, a slash in. I thought she was 11 because some people have told me that she was 11, but I just looked up Rika's information recently to find out the name of her grandmother and found out that she was actually 12 therefore Takato and Henry are also 12. Oh one more year big difference, QB said sarcastically to Naruto from within the mindscape. Naruto mentally laughed at that. So really how long have you known Rika? Seiko asked. About two days, he honestly answered. Really, are you new to Shinjuku or something then Naruto? Makino asked. Naruto nodded and sipped his refilled teacup. Hi. I live with my uncle in an apartment near Shinjuku Junior High, Naruto said. The two elder women nodded before turning to Rika. Makino then got up and gripped Rika's arm and pulled her out of the room and closed the door to the kitchen so that Naruto and Seika wouldn't hear. Rika, tell me the truth are you dating this surprisingly handsome young blonde, Makino, said to her daughter in complete seriousness. 
Rika glared at her mother and blushed lightly. You know, she yelled. Nanny, but he looks like such a catch to me for a girl your age. He seems to be physically fit, mentally stable, and best of all, he can take your emotionlessness and not get pissed off what's not to like? Makino asked. The fact that he is a stupid Whiskers. Whiskers is his name now. Ah, oh, that's cute you have a nickname for him. Growling, Rika's purple eyes glared at her mother. However, within the kitchen during the heated conversation between mother and daughter, Seiko and Naruto were talking. So, but really are you dating Rika? Seiko asked. Honestly, Seiko-san, no. But if I want to which I have no intention of doing, Naruto said. Yet, he thought. I would have to break through her shell of emotionlessness. I once had a friend whose personality was exactly like Rika's. The thing was that his parents were killed, Naruto said. Seiko gasped. How awful. The poor boy must have been traumatized, Seiko said. Naruto nodded. He was and he became so caught up in negative emotions he built a wall, a second skin, that I would call his emoness, Naruto joked, causing Seiko and he to chuckle. But the only thing he wanted was someone to understand the pain he was going through. He was looking for someone like me, Naruto added. Nanny, but you said you lived with an uncle? Seiko said. I lied to you because I knew you all would take pity on me and try to take me into your home. I have a great deal of psychological knowledge, and I can tell you and your daughter slash daughter-in-law are that way. I am an orphan. My parents died when I was just a baby, and I was taken into an orphanage, Naruto said. Seiko nodded and realized that this was just what Rika was looking for. Someone who has lived through an immense amount of pain and anger, and still has the courage to smile and appreciate the things in life. Well, I support your attempt to befriend my granddaughter. She needs someone like you, Naruto. Please promise me you will look after her like that Kitsune that always watches over her, Seiko said. Naruto's eyes widened. You know, he hissed. Of course and I wouldn't doubt you know also of her guardian fox. I was once Rika's age and at that age I was very observant of my surroundings since I had taken up the martial arts during those days. I'm still observant and although my fighting skills have dulled, my eyesight has not, Seiko said. I will, I will do my best Seiko-san. I will do what I can to protect Rika, Naruto said. I never go back on my word, a serious look in his eyes. Seiko saw the look his sapphire orbs gave off, and it was one that you could just look at Naruto and know you can trust him to do what you want him to, and the elderly woman nodded in thanks. Arigato. Naruto, she thanked mentally. The door then opened and Makino and Rika walked back into the room. However, as Rika was about to sit down her D-arc had gone off along with Naruto's. A Digimon was present in the area, in the compound of Rika's home, but it was somewhere outside as identified by the signal compass on the D-Arkansas Rika and Naruto quickly got up and left, but Naruto stopped and turned to bow. Arigato for the tea, Seiko-san, Makino-san. Rika, wait up, Naruto called as he put on his shoes and chased after Rika who was already out the door. Ought to be in love, Makino said. Seiko chuckled before looking up at the moon through the open door that led to the walkway that led all the way around the house. Please keep her safe, Seiko thought. I will keep my promise to keep Rika safe. That is my Nindo. I never go back on my word, Naruto thought. He then saw movement in the trees as Rika raced around to the back of her house. Doramon, Naruto mentally called out. During their time to train in Naruto's mind, they had already developed the mental link to know when the other is in danger. I'm here, Naruto, Doramon called out from above, before dropping down from the trees with Kalyaman still on his head. Come on, we gotta follow Rika. She found a Digimon in her backyard, Naruto said and then the three rounded the corner and saw a large amount of trees that made up Rika's backyard. Some backyard, this is a training ground, Doramon said. The three entered the forest and came to a clearing that was surrounded by webs, and then hid behind some trees and saw Rika and Rinamon looking around the area. Naruto took out his D-arc, so he could get a piece of information of the Digimon Rika was going to fight. Then they saw it, a large arachnid-looking Digimon. The spider had three long legs on each side, the first ones being wrapped in three belts, the second ones were wrapped in purple bandages and had three stripes of yellow while the third ones had were plain black and yellow and finally the fourth ones were gripping long locks of red hair that were attached to a mane of crimson hair which was behind a mask of gold with multiple green eyes. The large bulbous backside of the spider Digimon was patterned with a large skull and crossbones with a large red stinger pointing out. The mouth of the Digimon was filled with sharp teeth and red claws came from the tips of the spider's legs. Okay, let's see what we got here. Rika said, reading the information from her D-Arc, Dokugumin, champion-level Digimon. A Digimon said to be born from accumulation of viruses and attacks with her poison thread and poison cobweb attacks. Well, Rika, let's squash this bug, Rinamon said. Of course, 
And finally, we're going to make you digivolve after you absorb its data, Rika said. Dokugumin walked along the threads of the webbing she had created and laughed evilly at the fox Digimon and her tamer. Oh goody, I've been craving some fox for dinner. Maybe I'll have the human for an appetizer, Dokugumin said with a creepy laugh. Naruto, Kalyamon, and Doramon watched as Rinamon began to fight. Rinamon jumped into the air and crossed her arms in front of her, and then a white circle of light formed. Diamond Storm Rinamon cried out as she spread out her arms, and then diamond shards of light formed before rocketing off and striking Dokugumin. The spider Digimon cackled like witch on Halloween before glaring at Rinamon. Let me show you a real attack, Dokugumin said. Poison cobweb. A purple string of web flew from the virus spider's abdomen and tried to hit Rinamon but missed. Power paw. Rinamon yelled and then her hand-like paws became surrounded by ghostly blue flames. Rinamon punched the spider Digimon in its face before planting a kick on the head to front flip onto the spider's abdomen and then bringing down both fists of flame onto the spider's back before landing in front of Rika again. Dokugumin groaned in pain. Ugh, too. Strong Dokugumin said in a weak voice. Rika and Rinamon smirked. No, Rika, don't let your guard down. Naruto yelled. Rika and Rinamon turned at the sound of Naruto's voice. Huh, whiskers. Dokugumin smirked and then aimed a poison cobweb attack at Rika. I won't let you hurt Rika, Rinamon said, and then pushed Rika out of the way and became ensnared in the purple webbing. Dokugumin chuckled as she pulled the fox Digimon back towards the web and prepared to feast, but Rika drew a card. Digimodify, Sneeman's twin sickle. Rika yelled and swiped the card. Rinamon's hands then changed from the wrist down to twin sickles like that of a praying mantis except made of actual metal sickles. Naruto, Doramon and Kalyamon ran towards Rika as Rinamon sliced her way out of the webbing before jumping off of Dokugumon's head. Rinamon's sickle hands glowed red before two energy crescents shot from the sickles and impacted with Dokugumon. Rika, are you alright? Naruto asked. Rika turned and glared at the blonde. Go away, Naruto, Rika yelled. Not even bothering with the nickname due to the situation she was in. Did you modify? Speed activate, she yelled and had the D-Arc scan the card to give its abilities to Rinamon. Rinamon then sped towards Dokugumin and planted a power paw attack to its face, but the spider felt nothing and knocked Rinamon away into a tree. Rinamon panted as she was struck with a poison threat attack, sending her faster into the tree and leaving a Rinamon-shaped imprint. Renamon, get up! Rika yelled and saw the spider Digimon about to attack her. Naruto and Doramon were about to help when Rinamon got up and faster than the speed of sound which caused Rinamon to make a sonic boom from her movement appeared in front of Rika and took the attack at close range. Rinamon screamed in pain before looking at Rika with pained icy blue eyes. Rinamon, why? Why did you take the hit for me? Rika asked. Rinamon smirked. It's obvious, isn't it? We are partners and partners look out for each other, Rinamon said before falling to the ground, her body phasing in and out of existence. Naruto growled as he saw Rika actually shed tears. That's it, Doramon, let's go, Naruto said. The two charged forward with a battle cry. Rasengan, Naruto yelled. Metal shoot. Doramon roared. Multiple balls of metal formed in Doramon's maw and struck the champion-level Digimon in her face, sending her skidding along the web, but doing any real damage. Naruto channeled Chakra into his feet, so he couldn't stick to the web, and the ball of Chakra and wind slammed into the Digimon's face and actually sent pain through the virus-type's body. Naruto then jumped back as she tried to hit him with a poison cobweb attack. Poison thread? Dokugumin yelled, and then a purple vapor raced towards Naruto, who formed a cross-shaped hand sign. Kagebunshin no Yatsu. Naruto yelled, and then 20 kegbunshins formed. Many took the hit from the poison thread attack leaving just enough for Naruto to do his combination attack with Dormon. For clones ran along the web and skidded underneath Dokugumin, and then kicked the spider in its chin with chakra enhanced kicks, sending Dokugumin skyward. Naruto. The clones yelled as they kicked the spider Digimon. A clone then gave Naruto and Dormon a boost before the two charged downwards as Dokugumin went up. Uzumaki raising Kane Renden slash Naruto Uzumaki spiraling metal barrage. Naruto and Dormon yelled as the Digimon shot forth with a heavy metal dash attack, while spinning and Naruto flipped in the air to meet Dokugumin with Dormon and then planted an axe kick while Dormon's rotating form slammed into the spider at the same time. Dokugumin yelled in pain and fell back down to her web and it was because of that that the original force of the attack had no effect since the barrage only got power from when the opponent made contact with the ground or a solid surface. Spider webs were not going to cut it. 
Dokugiman chuckled as Naruto and Doramon were knocked away by her legs and then slammed into a tree before slumping down groaning in pain. Meanwhile, Rika was still looking at the down Digimon. Don't cry, Rika. I did what I could to protect you, the golden fox Digimon said. But, Rinamon, you can't go. I need you. You're my friend, please don't go, Rika said with tears coming down her face. Rinamon smiled as she had actually hit past the hard exterior of Rika Nanaka and reached her original soft spot. I'm glad that you got to me your emotions for once, Rika, Rinamon said, and then closed her eyes. Rinamon, no you can't leave me, Rinamon. Kalyamon now, Naruto told the little white Digimon. Kalyamon looked at Naruto with a confused look, but it seemed that he didn't need to understand Naruto's command for as Rika shouted Rinamon's name. Her D arc shone with a white light and the red, upside-down triangle on Kalyamon's head began to glow brightly. Digivolution. Rinamon digivolved to Kubamon. Renamon's form changed to resemble a large golden and white-furred kitsune with the edges of the white fur that glowed with mystical blue flames on the paws. Instead of one tail, eight more had sprouted out. Now nine blonde-colored tails each tipped with white fur that seemed to also glow with mystical blue flames, just like her paw fur. The bottom of Cubamon's mouth was white and two purple slash marks were shown underneath her still glacial blue eyes, and a large white mane extended along the entire length of her neck. The inyang symbol was shown above each of her forelegs, and one lay on the center of her forehead. A white and red rope tied in a bow with two golden bells attached to it was wrapped around her neck. Kubimon. Kubi said from within Naruto's mind. Kubimon, Naruto, and Dormon thought in shock. She, she, she looks. Naruto tried to find words, but then Kubi decided to finish them for him. She's gorgeous, the crimson-colored demon Kitsune said, and if Naruto could as bijou, he would be drooling and wolf howling, or well, fox howling at the supposed hotness of Cubamon. Cuso, I wish I was out there with you right now, Kit. What do you think, Mr. and Mrs. QB slash Cubamon? Nice, isn't it? QB asked. Naruto sweat dropped at the demon. You're a sad, strange little demon. You have my pity farewell, Naruto said. Pity? I don't want your damn friggin' pity. I want to grab Cubamon and... Too late. Naruto thought with a smile as any mental images QB would have brought from his comments were now gone because he severed the connection, which would then be reconnected after a while. What you digivolved, but how? Rika asked. Kubamon growled at Dokugiman and then spread out her nine tails. Small blue fireballs were lit at the end of each tail. Take this, fox tail inferno. Kubamon yelled and then the ghostly blue flames burnt the entire spider web and also Dokugiman's legs as they began burning her alive. Now to finish you off, Dragon Wheel. Cubamon howled as she jumped into the air. The nine-tailed fox Digimon spun rapidly in the air and surrounded herself in blue flames before the flame took the form of a giant blue dragon of flame, which then roared and burnt Dokugiman alive before turning her into data which Cubamon absorbed before floating down to the ground. How, how did you digivolve? Rika asked. I believe Naruto can answer that, Cubamon said. Rika turned to the blonde who got up from the ground. Whiskers. I mean Naruto, how did Cubamon digivolve? Rika asked. Naruto smiled. Because during that time when Rinamon was dying you let her in and you unlocked your bottle's feelings and let Rinamon know who you really are inside. Behind the mask of an impassive emo girl was a soft, caring one who only wanted things to be good in her life. Naruto said, Data is only half the puzzle to digivolution. When a Digimon bonds with a tamer, the Digimon will use the energy of the Tamer to Digivolve and the bond between a Tamer and their Digimon is what brings out the true strength in a tamed Digimon and thus Digivolution can be achieved, Naruto said in a sage-like tone. Rika nodded before walking up to Naruto and looking down at the ground. Well it's um late and all, and you must be kinda tired so maybe you should spend the night. I mean I'm not saying you should and I'm not saying I would like you to stay the night here, but... Naruto chuckled and then put a finger to Rika's lips, telling her to be quiet. Hee hee, it's okay Rika. Yeah sure I'll spend the night here because I am tired and it is late. Now then come on Rika-chan it's time for bed and we both have school tomorrow, Naruto said. Rika and Kubamon chuckled before looking at each other. It was during that small period of staring that occurred between the females that Doramon gave Naruto a high five. Nice plan Naruto, spending the night at the girl's house. You gonna sneak into her room you old dog you, Doramon said with a perverted grin. Naruto turned and glared at his Digimon. Kalyamon, having jumped on top of Naruto's head and fallen asleep, didn't hear the swear words that came out of Naruto's mouth, and Rika's ears were covered by Kubamon's tails as Naruto yelled at his Digimon partner. The group laughed before they each went to their respective rooms. 
Rika went in hers where Narit had finally gotten to see Rika with her hair down when they both went to get some water before going to bed. Your hair looks nice when it's not in a ponytail, he had said, and this had caused Rika to blush at that compliment, as she tried to come up with a reply to that since no boy had ever said anything to her in a way Naruto had said it. It's like he has some kind of boyish charm, and he doesn't even seem aware of it, Rika thought. Naruto chuckled and sported his foxy grin. Don't take it as how you're seeing it in your mind. Just look at it as a friend complimenting a friend. Well, good night, Rika-chan, Naruto said before going into the guest room to sleep with Doramon and Kalyaman. Rinamon watched from on a nearby tree as Rika went to bed and at the same time Doramon watched Naruto on the extra futon that he was sleeping on with Naruto as Kalyaman slept on Naruto's stomach. Things are getting interesting between those two. The two Digimon thought with a smile before they went to sleep. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.